So let's move to number to panel number three for about the grand the grand coalition for digital jobs and uh, we'll have a conversation with uh, young people. So uh, Lucila Scioli, head of unit of communications networks for European Commission. Vilva Misiukonien, uh, EU Affairs Managers for Infobalt. Ian Clifford, the founder and CEO of Eurock Online Limited. Thanasis Papadimitrius, Senior IT Executive uh, and partner and member of uh, the Board of uh, Directors for the Hellenic Professionals Informatics Society. And Panagiotis Demestichas, Professor in the University of Piraeus for in the School of Information and Communication Technology. And we have uh, students and uh, young ICT professionals. Stamatia Turna, she is a student of Computer Engineering and Informatics Department of University of Patras, in the Software develop, uh, Developer. George Rusopoulos, student of School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And George Hadzitheodosiu, a young technology in Global Security Mentor. We are too many. And they have to manage the time, okay. I'm the moderator. Yep, okay. Uh, so, um, let's start uh, and uh, start from uh, the European Commission uh, perspective, uh, Lucilla Scioli. Um, good uh, afternoon, I guess. Thank you very much for inviting us. Um, I will uh, briefly talk about what uh, the Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs is. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an initiative by the European Commission that uh, has been already mentioned a few times this morning. And I just wanted to give a very short overview of what it does. Uh, first, let me tell you that um, nowadays, I mean, we heard a lot about unemployment this morning, and we know that in Greece and in other European countries, youth unemployment is a serious issue. At the same time, if you look, um, a lot of um, media right now is publishing uh, very alarming articles about the impact of, uh, of technologies on the labor markets, and it talks about a lot of negative impacts in terms of inequality, in terms of the disappearance of the median worker, and so on. And with the Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs, we wanted to put, uh, to focus the attention of um, um, the media, the citizens, and Europe on the fact that these technologies are also having very positive impacts, and in particular creating new professions and new jobs. And just to think of professions like application developers and things we've been discussing this morning that didn't exist until um, a few years ago. And uh, as it has been said at length this morning, it also changes, these technologies also change the profiles of current professions. And that's why there is a need to make sure that the workforce at large has the appropriate skills um, to be able to uh, perform the, the, the new tasks. Uh, what the Grand Coalition um, does is that um, it it adds, if you want, to the e-skills campaign that we are living now. This conference is part of a campaign which is very much focused on awareness raising. And what the Grand Coalition does is to bring together several stakeholders, uh, being businesses and, and governments, and um, undertake a number of activities. The first one is about asking companies to make very specific commitments in terms of trainings and internships and placements they can actually offer. And uh, we have a number of companies and of other uh, organizations, uh, 50 until now. This uh, initiative is one year old, basically. And we have about 50 commitments from, uh, from uh, companies uh, which involve both large companies in the ICT sector, as well as smaller organizations in uh, um, many European countries. And these initiatives have already delivered about 5,000 jobs. We have about 10,000 internships that were given during the past year, and 250,000 trainerships. So I think that the numbers show that over one year, 
uh, these commitments have uh, managed to, to deliver something new to the labor markets. Of course, we have seen before the numbers in terms of unemployment, and it's clear that we have a long way to go, but uh, we believe this is, a, this is a good start. Um, secondly, we strengthened in Europe the call for reform of education. And uh, this is about formal education, but it's also very much about informal education and trainings. Um, our objective is to be able to make sure that member states can spend European funding to uh, retrain people who are now in the pool of unemployment and who can be retrained um, in a few months to, uh, to work in the world of ICT. And uh, in order to do that, we need very much the help of the member states, uh, especially those who make decisions about the way they can spend uh, European money, such as the structural funds. And with these objectives, we are inviting in all the member states to set up some national coalitions that were mentioned earlier. And uh, national coalitions meaning bringing different ministries together in a member state, but also um, the, the business chambers and also uh, the ICT sector identify together what are the needs in that country, what can, kind of skills are needed in that country, and then try to match um, and providing trainings that are able to match these needs. Um, it was mentioned before that the Greek National Coalition was launched, uh, well, actually is going to be launched today, and I think uh, it's, a, it's a very good achievement. But that doesn't mean that we only want people to remain in the countries where they are. I mean, one of the uh, big advantages of Europe is that people can freely move between countries and therefore we also have programs which encourage mobility. Um, many of these ICT jobs, unfortunately, are uh, concentrated in certain countries more than in others. And therefore it's important that uh, even people who, who have the right skills are willing to move to, to other countries and are open to learn new languages and adapt in other countries. Um, so finally, just, just let me say that um, this issue of uh, job creation is as you can imagine, very important in the European Commission. You have seen before a video of, of support of uh, Vice President Cruz. And uh, uh, now the Commission is changing. There are European elections at the end of May. Um, that means that we will also change the President of the Commission and the, the set of commissioners. And therefore, we, in our daily work, are now busy in trying to um, uh, write narratives and making sure, if you want, that the next commission is also taking this issue very seriously. And of course, with the big unemployment problem that we have now, we cannot dismiss the uh, power of the, of the technologies in terms of job creation. Thank you very much. Thank you, well, thank you very much. Uh, so I was I was really pressing all the, the panelists and I was told to, to go and leave because uh, there is a need for a more kind uh, person. I'm just kidding. The moderator for this panel is Mr. Alexander Ridley. He's the deputy head of unit for uh, communication networks, content and technology for the European Commission. Mr. Ridley. Hello. This is a challenge, actually. We were talk discussing whether we should not postpone the panel to this afternoon, but it was decided otherwise that you have to stay with us. But So we take up the challenge and make it as um, inter interactive and hopefully interesting uh, to you, because we talk a lot about e-skills, about digital skills, about the grand coalition and so on. But actually, I think what would be interesting is to see some people who are doing actually real projects from the real world and also confront what these people are doing with um, the views of uh, a few young people that we've invited to be with us on the panel here. So we try to be um, finished before the 55 minutes that we had for this panel here so that you can all get your lunch uh, in time. So let's start directly and um, I will um, introduce five people to you who will briefly tell actually what they are doing to solve this digital skills gap here in their very specific way and afterwards we'll have a little interactive session together with, uh, with the young people there. I'd like to start with Ian Clifford. Ian is, um, perhaps you t tell yourself what you're doing, where you're coming from, why you're here, Hi. and what you can help. Yeah, sure. Uh, how are you doing? You want your lunch? I expect. Okay, I'm going to be really quick. Uh, UROC is a youth employability platform 
Uh, it was developed in a hackathon uh, with young people in Lithuania. Uh, it aims to help young people to discover the skills they didn't realize they already had. Uh, and uh, it's been sponsored and supported by Liberty Global, who are here um, and have been fantastic supporters. Uh, and our aim is to try and reach thousands of young people in the next, in it, well, in its lifespan, but certainly uh, in the coming year. Uh, we're a pledge to the Grand Coalition, uh, and my aim is to try and help young people uh, discover those skills that they've, they've already got, uh, and give them the chances that many of us have already got. So I, that's all I'm going to say at the moment, and I'm hoping that, that some of the questions are going to pick out the things that I want to talk about. Yeah, perhaps you can just add one uh, in you know a few sentences. Why is, for example, LinkedIn not good enough in terms of a platform, and why are you doing you rock? What's the what's the difference? Okay, so so LinkedIn is is a, a platform for employability, and it's it's not really been designed for young people. Uh, when they go there, they see older professionals who have got large sets of networks. They've got. Um, significant track records and career histories, and young people don't have career history. So they feel disadvantaged at the outset. So that's why we've created um, UROC, because we want, I, I really want to give young people a level playing field so that they can feel that they've got a profile to be proud of. So UROC focuses on skills rather than career history. Um, and I really want it to, to, to pick out and for young people to discover that they've got lots of ICT skills. Okay, thanks a lot. Manolis, you are from the um, from uh, HEPIS, which is also an organizer, a core uh, organizer associated to uh, you know, what's happening here in, in Greece in the area of digital skills. And you have launched a very nice project, which is not only nice because it, there are some concrete results in some of the people who are benefiting from the project actually with us today. Um, but you know, you can tell us perhaps a little bit you know, what okay. you achieved with your project and what it was about. Yeah, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers of uh, the event, of this high-level event, uh, giving us the opportunity to present our pledge and uh, our impact so far. I would like to thank you, Lucy and Marietta, for your valuable support so far. You know how to drive the Pan-European Initiative and how to inspire uh, numerous organizations across Europe to connect each other so as to further strengthen and maximize their impact. And uh, let's, uh, let's start with, uh, about the rationale of uh, GetBiz initiative. GetBiz is an online portal that contains uh, educational material in the fields of entrepreneurship, digital skills, CSR, and professional and uh, career development. So uh, the visitors of uh, the website have the opportunity to acquire valuable knowledge that uh, is uh, very uh, uh, is highly demanded uh, in, the, in the labor market. And at the same time, we have established an uh, online quiz through which candidates have the opportunity to claim great prizes offered by, the, uh, by our sponsors, by the wide network of sponsors of, let's say, 20 or 22 sponsors that uh, support uh, GetBiz initiative. So, uh, they have the opportunity to claim, let's say, bachelor's degrees, scholarships for uh, master's degrees, 300 ECDL certifications, ITIL certifications, more advanced certifications like uh, the MTA vouchers. And uh, we're happy that uh, three of uh, our beneficiaries are here with us uh, today to present uh, how they have benefited so far uh, from, uh, from our pledge. Um, apart from that, we have, uh, all, we have also tried to align our initiative with uh, some other European activities like the Get Online Week. We ran, uh, one month ago, we ran uh, uh, the Get Online Week campaign that was seen by more than half of a million uh, young people. So we are trying to convey the opportunities of the ICT sector, the prospects and the skills that are needed for uh, some uh, specific professions. And apart from that, we're very, very happy to support UROC uh, for the dissemination of, uh, of it to, to young people in Greece. Uh, we have uh, already expressed our commitment during the last meeting in Brussels, do you, during the workshop that uh, you organized. So, uh, so as to further promote uh, Euroc.jobs in, in Greece. Okay, so when is the Greek version of Euroc coming? It's already there. It's already there, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 
Fantastic. I'd like to just ask one of our younger um, people here sitting with us, um, George. Uh, first of all, you know, what's your background and how did you benefit from uh, Get Busy? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm George Hadzitheodosiu. Uh, I'm a student of the American College of Greece. I'm very grateful to be here and uh, thank you, the organizers, for the invitation. Um, I learned about Get Busy through online uh, media platforms such as social networks, uh, etc. And uh, I was really amazed to see the potential that this program had uh, for Greek students trying to get a career in the IT community. It's very important to support young people and uh, I'm very grateful for their support, uh, both for uh, Happys and Microsoft and the other par partners that are uh, in the program. I was introduced to the program and uh, got engaged to the quiz and tried uh, to participate and not to uh, get too much into it. Effectively, uh, it gave me the opportunity to uh, continue my studies at the American College of Greece with a full scholarship, and at the same time uh, attend a study abroad in the United States of America, uh, majoring in global security and intelligence. It's, uh, it's a great program, and I'm, enc I'm encouraging uh, young people to participate in the second round, which is already in effect. Uh, there is lots of potential, and uh, it's just there for the taking. Just get in there and try to get things done because it's you, your own efforts that are going to get you to, su to success with proper structure and assistance from strong companies and people. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's really cool because um, very often I ask myself when we're doing these project initiatives in, uh, in the commission working together with companies, organizations, national organizations, what, what's coming out of it concretely? You know, How do we really see the impact of these projects? And I'm very glad that we see some people who have actually benefited from these projects. Now, the next person I'd like to briefly introduce to you is Vilma Misio Konine. Actually, there's a story behind this because we met at a conference in Italy last year and I found that she's a very interesting person from Lithuania working on um, various uh, projects and in, in the area of digital skills. Can you just briefly say how you're involved in Lithuania and how this does make a difference? Thank you, Alexandra, for nice words. And uh, actually, I'm wearing several caps. I'm part of the National eSkills Coalition, and I'm uh, running uh, eSkills Awareness Campaign in my country. But today, I'm for the pledge Bebras. What does it mean? What it means? The beaver. It's a small, smart animal. Um, and uh, this is about the international context which was founded in Lithuania 10 years ago by the professor uh, Valentina Dagiene. You know, we have um, a very popular uh, context of uh, mathematics, kangaroo. We have also Olympiad in informatics, but we are sending just, you know, only the, the smartest people, uh, uh, smartest pupils are uh, representing the country, just a very small, small group. And, he, and the professor, together with her uh, uh, academicians and, and IT teachers, one day uh, come to the brilliant idea, why not to have a, like a kangaroo uh, uh, contest in informatics to be run very broadly? So, said that, um, they started from Lithuania and it was, you know, created for the groups of five group ages. Um, can I have the second picture, please? And uh, right now it is running already in the 30 countries uh, and the th uh, seven are uh, planning to join uh, till Japan and New Zealand but we are really missing, uh, we really have countries which are not part of this great uh, uh, campaign, the, the, uh, of this great context. Uh, so um, actually these are the tasks on uh, logics and informatics. It's not particularly programming, but it's very access uh, accessible and uh, easy, you know, for, for the, all the uh, kids and kids really like it, uh, especially what we are glad that the participation of the girls is 52%. So it shows that the interest uh, from the uh, girls is, is, uh, is really big. We really need to, how to say, to keep it going. 
Uh, the countries with the greatest participation are Germany, France, even some, you know, UK. Uh, but uh, we are missing uh, Romania, Portugal, Denmark, Luxembourg, uh, Malta, uh, Croatia, and sorry, guys, Greece and Cyprus. We know that we have you have a very many talented uh, children here. And we really want uh, to, that uh, you would be organizing this uh, contest in your country. So there are two, two ways. Um, uh, there is a, IT te teachers are meeting on the annual basis in the special workshop to organize uh, the tasks. So they are creating worldwide pool for the tasks. Then it is localized and everything goes on the national online platforms. So there is a call the uh, Beaver Week, and the schools and the countries in their own countries, they organize that on, on their own uh, uh, site. And the results are summarized, and uh, for the time being, five million young uh, pupils already took part uh, for example, last year in 2013, uh, 700,000 uh, worldwide and 75% from Europe. So we really want, how to say, the rest countries come to the pool and, and um, see the oh, numbers. Oh, oh, and oh, we really, uh, the, those who are not part of it, we really want to invite to Vilnius and Ruskininke to this workshop and 10 year anniversary event to share the experience and to join that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Vilma. Quite impressive. And uh, it, it looks like you're still looking for a few partners for a uh, number of countries. If there are people interested in the room, talk to Vilma afterwards. I'd like to um, pass the microphone uh, quickly to Stamatia uh, Turna. I hope the pronunciation is more or less Stamatia uh, correct. And um, she's, a, she's a student and um, software developer, definitely a young person, and um, she is also uh, was a participant in this Get Busy uh, competition. And uh, if you had a question to ask to Vilma, what, what would you ask? So first of all, do you hear me? It's okay? Okay. Um, I would like to say that I'm here to focus on how we should attract the young people uh, to ICT skills, and especially girls. So what I would like to, to ask is about um, Berberas and how do you encourage girls to participate in this contest? Okay, you know, first of all, I should admit, you know, well, right now I'm in the IT policy, but me started, I started as a software developer. And that was because in my seventh grade, my teacher said, Vilma, look, uh, there is some school, uh, corresponding school of the young programmers, and I know that you are good in logic, so uh, why not you to try? And that was the starting point, you know, you, in your young age, you really need an encouragement and uh, to guide you to uh, understand. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, the girls are doing great. There are many talented girls. And last week we held uh, uh, Girls in ICT Day in Lithuania, and we had two great workshops running in, Lith in Vilnius and Kaunas. And it looks that they, they were very excited to hear those role model stories. And uh, they intend to, 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 to join this uh, Bebras and some other activities. So I think that uh, that's the role of the teachers and maybe the um, also uh, of the parents. But they need to understand what does the IT profession or uh, engagement is about, because for for the time being uh, we understood that. Uh, there is an image of IT like, oh, that's a poor programmer working in the cellar, you know, like geeky, and nothing else. And uh, that there are a lot of the uh, different workplaces, professions for online marketing, graphic design, IT architecture. So that is, uh, they, you should fascinate them and you should make them passion. Okay, thanks a lot. Actually, I will introduce a, a little element of surprise here because we're also going to have one or two questions to the floor. So you can actually ask the 
people here uh, one or two questions. So think about it, and I'll pass on the microphone um, to you in a second. Now, the Grant Coalition is um, an initiative which brings together various organizations from you know, all kinds of different backgrounds in different countries. We have entrepreneurs, we, ha we have uh, uh, industry associations, but we also have people from the academic sector. And uh, we have here um, Professor de Mestijas, who will briefly say what he's doing actually to change um, the situation in terms of digital skills here. If I can just add one more word is, the, um, there's this concept of pledge which has been mentioned and perhaps it's not 100% clear actually what a pledge means in the framework of this Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs. Actually, a pledge is a commitment by an organization to do something against a problem. So not only to discuss it and say, okay, there is a problem, how much is it? But no, to say, and we can all contribute to actually change the situation and improve the situation and do something concrete. So a pledge is a commitment to actually act. So thank you for the introduction. My name is Panagiotis Damestichas. I'm a professor at the University of Piraeus. I'm the head of the Department of Digital Systems. The department actually has uh, two directions on, on the, at the undergraduate level, one on digital services. So we produce, uh, let's say, software engineers that can work on aspects like uh, e-learning, like uh, digital health, or on whatever service we can deliver through the internet. And the second direction is, uh, for instance, related to infrastructure. So we produce experts on access networks, on core networks, and stuff like that. The department has a 15-year uh, lifetime. I'm there for 12 years, and since the last three or four years, I'm the head of the department. One of my great ambitions was, let's say, to uh, do certain things to impact more regarding the economy and regarding the society. And how to implement that? The first thing for the short term and the midterm is to create uh, stronger links with industry. When we talk industry, we are talking about industry in Greece, but also regarding industry uh, beyond, uh, beyond Greece at the European level. Uh, we believed from the beginning that we could place engineers or software engineers also abroad. So today, for instance, we have several uh, former students of ours that work in Europe or work even in the US. And eventually, I think we will also reach China and Australia. Now, how to build this link? This is what also attracted my attention to the digital coalition. I think that you need regular interactions with industry, and these we have formalized through formal meetings or also through workshops, and also we're formalizing through digital tools that we are creating. And what can these, do to, uh, these uh, tools uh, do for us? For instance, we can have declarations of interest regarding, uh, uh, from, uh, from industry regarding competencies that are missing. We can have students advertising their skills, and also we can have certain matching uh, processes. Also, another thing that we should take into account is that there are great potentials in the universities, in the public universities, and I can speak also for my department. Every year, more or less, according to the law, we're obliged to somehow uh, streamline our curricula at the undergraduate or at the postgraduate level. So we have certain sources of influence, for instance, from research, certain things turn into academic uh, courses, but also I think an important source of influence is uh, these workshops or these tools that uh, aspects like the Digital Coalition can bring in order to bring certain things closer inside. Of course, uh, by saying links with industry, I should not disregard the fact that, okay, we're talking about a country, we're talking about a society, so we have to take a look at what we, type of Greece we want for 2020, for 2030, etc. So certain things will change and we have to be prepared also for that beyond skills. And uh, that's all for my Okay, thanks a lot. Um, our third young person here is uh, another George Rosopoulos who, um, whom I would ask, do you, would, you know, following these expl uh, explanations here, would you have any direct questions to um, your neighbor? Uh, actually I do. Uh, hi, first of all. I would like to ask Mr. Demestikas about uh, the changes that happen in the global market and whether the universities are prepared for these changes. Uh, we heard before that uh, there will be new kind, kinds of works and uh, ICT, ICT skills need to be improved every time and uh, what do universities do about it? And the, the second part is uh, actually about uh, whether these ICT skills and this sec sector can provide young students a, a good job for their future. So, yeah. That's it. If you could just summarize your question in one minute. Yeah. Regarding the preparation for change, let's say Greek universities, for instance, are extremely successful in research. So they're preparing for change. Actually, they're kind of the drivers for change. 
So the issue to do is, of course, to bring these change, certain mature research results, to bring them into curricula. For instance, 4G, wireless communications, was a research issue five years ago. Now it has to be in the curriculum. Also, we have to be frank with ourselves. When people go out in the market, I mean, one of the first questions from industry will be, okay, after all, can you program? Yes or no? And uh, I mean, I think I have uh, several examples of students that go into companies, I can say some companies, like for instance, NSN, and take tests, and these tests are actually lessons from the undergraduate curricula. So I think we have the, the issues. Uh, we may need a bit of uh, help in the following direction. I mean, uh, we have to be prepared for the following, that there is no getting away. I mean, we have to privatize our economy, so uh, no more public sector, so we have to be as good as possible, and this is part from the university, but also from the student side, you know, to accommodate and to believe that this is the dream, you know. Any other views from the young people on, on that topic? Otherwise, I would uh, perhaps look if there's anybody who has a very burning question um, from the audience, just to make it a little bit interactive. I think that just hung hunger is uh, too strong of an incentive for you not to ask questions. Yes, one, one question from the audience. Well, actually, I have two questions. Uh, <laughs> one question is to Mr. Haji Theodosiu. Uh, I understand that you're working at the uh, security uh, sector of the information systems. Uh, uh, do you feel that internet, the state internet was developed uh, is uh, good enough uh, to take us forward because uh, if we remember, internet was uh, 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 invented in order to, uh, for uh, uh, researchers to interact. Uh, so they were interacting in good faith, uh, meaning that uh, uh, they didn't want to harm uh, somebody. Nowadays, uh, more of the people are trying to uh, harm uh, using the internet. So, do, are we prepared with the internet we have uh, to go forward in this, uh, 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 in this respect? And the other question to Mr. Domesticas is, uh, how does e-skills uh, uh, fit within e-education? Do we first need e-education and then e-skills? Thank you. Okay. Um. Who will start? You start. Thank you for the questions. I'd like to make a short but uh, very important survey. Uh, do we all agree right now that we are all using the internet to some extent? How many of you think that you're practically using the internet to its fullest capacity? Some hands, please. More or less? We all think that we're using the internet nowadays, but what the research has shown recently is that only about less than 10% of what we're using is what we think the internet is. We're using the surface web. We have a new trend nowadays called the dark or deep web, which has engaged thousands of researchers and companies worldwide, as well as governments, into finding out how the internet can be leveraged in a, in a deeper, in a more structured, but still in need of structure way. So to answer your question, sir, I think that we are moving towards a paradigm shift where companies and people need to understand that the whole world of big data and the understanding of it by companies and individuals is at a crucial point in time where we have to structure our understanding and our knowledge of what is behind everything. We have to make sure that these silos of data, this entire volume of data has to be organized in an understandable and practically usable way to make sense of data and make sure that we move from simple data to actionable data, to move from information to actionable intelligence. So if I may answer in a more diplomatic way, we are a long way from home, but at the same time, we are at the right spot to move from what I, what I would call the good old ARPANET to the new deep ARPANET, in a manner of speaking. Thank you. Listening to people, young people like you from Greece gives me some hope, I must say. <laughs> so perhaps we go to the, the reply to the question and then we can break up the session. Okay. 
Uh, in the question uh, regarding whether it is e-education or e-skills, I believe it's both. I mean, you need e-skills for e-education, and e-education should support e-skills. I think we should use every tool we have in our power. It will not only be e-education, it will also be classical means in order to create the appropriate uh, workforce. I strongly believe at the power of the teacher. I also believe at the power of the student and at the willingness. I think we have, however, a lot of tools today in order to create the appropriate workforce, appropriate scientists, appro appropriate engineers. Perhaps it's a matter of uh, policy in order to look in the future and say, okay, what type of Greece or what type of Europe do I want at 2020, 2030? For instance, in Greece, I will speak uh, specifically, I'm glad that uh, tourism goes well, I'm glad that maritime business goes well, but I also believe that ICT is also uh, a way forward for Greece. It can uh, help a lot the economy and the society. Okay, we have just two, two sentences, more sentences. If possible, from you know, I, I, I truly believe that we need to change the uh, curricula of informatics at school. Uh, how to explain that the kids, which are spending hours at the internet and the, and the computers, they say that they are boring at, in lessons of informatics, and how it to be that they are, in many cases, smarter than the the IT teachers. Uh, we really need to transform the, 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 uh, the curricula and improve, you know, a lot of uh, in, uh, education of IT teachers and uh, also, you know, um, modify between, let's say, specific courses, not only to have the course of the programming. Like my daughter who is here today in, the, in this room and her, in her nine class, she said, I never ever take this IT programming, never... And in the 10th class, she said, I'm going to be a graphic designer. I said, what about your, you know, your skills? You really need IT in your future, in your life. And it's a lot of the different things uh, the, kids, the, the children can learn at school, can gain these basic skills. Okay, I think that's the two sentences. And <laughs> Ian Clifford wanted to say some, yes, something. Fa probably as well. Just one famous slide, last words. I was words. going to show, there's a slide, if you can bring that up. Um, yeah, I just wanted to respond to some of the things about reaching people uh, and how we reach out to young people. And UROC is trying to take a different approach, and I don't know whether you're going to get the slide up, um, but it wants to take a different approach to engaging with young people, which actually is to go kind of contra to what I think most people would expect. With, there, there we go. Uh, contra to what most people would expect, this is an IT campaign. Um, and the first rule of UROC is don't talk about ICT. And the second rule of UROC is don't talk about ICT. Um, we want to try and reach young people and bring them to ICT and let them understand that they've got those skills without forcing that upon them, without them feeling like this is geeky, without them feeling like... And, and also, please notice, that's a girl on there. So we really want to make sure that we're reaching out to those people who don't think they're into IT but are actually quite good at it. So, yeah, that was all I wanted to say. Thanks. Okay. Um, thanks to all the panelists here. Roaring applause before we break up for lunch, please. And, ju and just in case, if you're interested in uh, getting in touch with uh, any of them, they're still around.